Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 88 of your Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. The starting title, and it might change, is just going, moving from being healers to being holders. And we'll talk more about that. And um, normally I don't have guests on the podcast, so please don't message me and ask to be on the podcast. <laughs> this is like a once a one-time thing. There's only one person on the planet that would agree to have on the podcast. Don't take it personal. Uh, but I'm here today with Heather Westmoreland. Um, we met through uh, her coming into some of my courses and then moving through the Wounded to Wise, which used to be called Sovereign Storytellers, as a I hate to even I don't even like to say like apprentice or something because it was really more of a co-facilitating process um and she i'll let you tell let you tell them about where to find you and what you offer and whatnot and then we'll dive into a couple of topics here hey well thank you for having me it's a, it's quite an honor i love <laughs> i love it um so yeah i'm the the easiest way to find me is heatherwestmoreland.com um and on facebook it's medium heather westmoreland uh so yeah the the website is pretty pretty clear on on where to find everything so that's that's the main stuff yeah what else what else do you want to know just a little <laughs> bit about what you do how you are okay. a medium but not in the mm -hmm. traditional sense because that's kind of what we'll mm -hmm. be talking about is reframing and redefining a lot of concepts mm -hmm. yeah it's it almost seems like there's just one version of a, a medium out there and it's like um sort of a showy like I I talk to dead people and then and I'm like the phone and then I translate to you you know yeah, like and a so living I, I board. right <laughs> so my background was <laughs> so my background was I was massage therapist and and uh, energy worker and uh just having conversations with people while working on their body was just fascinating the things they talk about uh, when I was working on certain areas and the themes and almost like the archetypes of the body just sort of revealed itself. So then uh, about, uh, I guess, 11 years ago now, I went through a coaching program that really, it's, it involves a lot of neuro-linguistic psychology, which is, was an, a very cool way to understand sort of the way that our psyche is is shaped and and how it works and what it what it needs to thrive is sort of the foundation of nlp so so i sort of incorporated those together and then sort of a, an interesting side effect of like working with you and um treating sort of health health issues that i was dealing with i realized that i had kind of buried some abilities from when i was a little kid um, that all just kind of came flooding back. And it, it's something that I think everybody has to some degree. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a it's a relationship with some sort of deep, deep aspect of that's in everyone. And this, um, some people maybe would call it the collective unconscious. Um, but there's a way that in, in my work with people, we sort of just go into this space together and there's, you know, a lot of different types of things that we experience there, but, but one of them is if there's a person passed away, that's kind of relevant to the client's growth, mm -hmm. then they show up and the, the client often, ex almost always the client has some uh, experience of them during that process. So it's really something it's, it's really an experience we co-create together. Yeah. And it's not as much about like me translating information to the person as it is about this per this loved ones showing up to really help, you know, help the person get closure, help them with healing. Sometimes, you know, often they had a great relationship with the person that's passed and they just show up to really help the client let go of, of a dynamic or an old strategy. That's crap that, that the, the passed away yeah. person kind of passed on. So, so it's very, it's a different kind of work. It's not, again, yeah. not just translating, but really like it's change work. It's transformation work. Yeah, um, and I find like it's so like it it's when somebody wants me to be like that other kind of medium, the sessions right. don't always go great. <laughs> right. But right. when the person's really focused on their healing, like it works every time. 
because what? that's what they want. That's like, that's why, I guess that's whatever the agreement that, that my spirit has with the situation. Yeah. That's yeah. what, that's what we're here to do. So that's where um, they're very excited to show up and they, they do beautiful work and it's mm-hmm. pretty lovely. And who knows what's really happening? You know, I, right. my, my podcast <laughs> right? we don't know. that I'll be launching soon is called agnostic medium because I, yeah. you know, I think to, to try to say that we understand what's going on here is pretty, pretty bonkers. Yeah. So, but it's about being open. I love that yeah. title a lot. And I like that it's a, um, so traditional mediumship to, to me feels like a, a, a delivery system, like they mm-hmm. receive information and deliver it. Whereas when you're working with someone and I've experienced this as well. It's a conversation. It's a back and forth mm-hmm. with you as sort of like the intermediary and the guide, mm-hmm. but not uh, delivering or influencing. So that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we've talked a lot before because I've struggled with the word healer and mm-hmm. um, you've talked about that we need to just own that word and, and redefine it and make mm-hmm. it something new. And then mm-hmm. um, part of why I wanted to do this podcast is we're, we and a lot of other people are in transition from the ways that we used to work with people, the ways that we used to manifest just don't work anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're going through a transition in life, things stop working or they start breaking or you get fired from your job or you get a divorce or some things just start to fall apart. And when you go through that cycle enough times, you recognize when things start falling apart, like, uh Oh, get excited. <laughs> here comes, <laughs> here comes an up level. Here yeah. comes a thing. Yeah. Um, and then so many of us are going through that personally mm. and globally because mm-hmm. everything broke, you know, it, things were breaking, obviously, but it entered our so much more awareness. Uh, it became more on the news and, you know, here's the virus and then here's mm-hmm. the blow up and just down the street from you and Minneapolis mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, all these things. And so this weird distorted time place i've heard many people talk about that that time feels distorted to them that the things that they used to do feel distorted and it's almost like time has been <clears throat> stretched like taffy and or a fun house mirror i think is what i used in the last podcast like what do we do now mm-hmm. that the things that used to work don't and we can't even we used to have a nice internal sense of time and now that's gone and 30 minutes can feel like three years and a month can mm-hmm. feel like the blink of an eye. Like everything's just weird. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so we had a really, we had a really robust engine before that was keeping us yeah. super distracted and super entrenched yeah. in our old ways of being. Yeah. And it just, and, and, and what's so um, just wild about this experience is everybody is having everybody is affected by this everybody is having to deal with the same thing at the same time and it's huge in the in the whole world the whole world so that's just (laughs) that's creating like a massive massive like groundwork for shifting yeah for sure And and it's super hard to navigate this even on a good day And so Mm -hmm. I wanted to have this conversation. So for you all who are going through all this stuff, just know that whatever we talk about is just, we're free flowing. We're talking about it. Don't take it out the gas as a gospel. Just let it. Yeah. We don't mean anything. (laughs) Right. right, right. (laughs) Yeah. We're completely full of shit. We're totally and so we're just and, uh, chit chatting and letting y'all <laughs> eavesdrop. And if something's right. helpful to you, then great. Which is interesting because this is the model, right? In mm-hmm. human design, do mm-hmm. what lights you up. Yeah. Have the conversations that feel stimulant, right. not, not necessarily light because there's a lot of heaviness, mm-hmm. but follow what impulse feels good to you. And if other people benefit from that, that's a wonderful side effect. 
-hmm. it's a, a, a conse natural consequence. It's not something you're setting out. Oh, we're going to have a podcast to help people and we're going to teach them something from our lofty place of wisdom. Totally. And this is not the patriarchy. Not it. <laughs> this right. is no longer the patriarchy <laughs> exclusively. Like don't yeah. ever just believe something because somebody tells you like run Never, it through your system. Even yourself exactly oh yeah maybe quite frequently if it's an automatic thought in your head it's trash it's, it's probably in the garbage. trash can yeah <laughs> most likely yeah yeah so yeah, we yeah, used to, to learn this new these model. ways yes mm -hmm. the new model that's what i want to you want to go to we used to mm -hmm. learn in feminine ways or receiving ways we're a sharing process so there's a theory out there i can't remember who talks about it but it's shifting that men and I'm using these terms very general that there's, mm -hmm. let's just say it this way. There's been a hierarchical system, right. somebody mm -hmm. at the top, Pedestal. a bunch of yep. peons at the bottom. Uh, and what we move to, which we are moving to back to, and also a new to like, this is how mm -hmm. it used to work where everything was flat. You know, people had equal value, egalitarian societies, things like that. And we are moving back to that, but it's in this new time. So I don't think we even need to spend a lot of time exploring, like, how was it done around the campfire in the cave mm -hmm. in the past? Let's yeah. just bring that all forward and, and ask what wants to happen now. Mm -hmm. So in terms of healing work, we've been so hands-on, literally, for you, for years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I've been emotionally hands-on and I was told a long time ago as a teenager to not pursue the medical path. I was heading down the emergency room doctor path, the emergency medicine path again. And I had a, my mom took me to meet with someone. I thought it was an astrologer, but she thinks it was a numerologist, but whatever. She said, don't do that. You've done that. It's over. Do something mm -hmm. different which mm -hmm. I really fought. And then I was pitchforked away from that with a back injury and then tried to go back okay. again and then got pregnant. And so never went back to it. But what I realized after meeting with Virginia Rosenberg and talking to you is that I just switched it then and became the emotional ER doctor, the emotional mm -hmm. messiness, the emotional crisis worker. So still swimming around in the blood and guts of it all, but just, in an emotional way. So I never really <laughs> let it go. <laughs> <laughs> you just put a different, put a different like just, packaging on it. Yeah. You're yeah. Like, oh, look, I did it yeah. <laughs> yeah. I dressed it up in a different package and sure. was like, I'm not doing emergency medicine as I'm on mm -hmm. call 24 hours a day for two weeks out of every month, you know, like still, mm -hmm. still, crisis, still chaos. What I'm hearing from other people, and I think what we've, we're experiencing is all of that is crashed and burned. And mm -hmm. now how do we bring our, how do we be in the world and when our desire is to help people, but we can't help or serve in the ways we used to help or serve. Mm -hmm. And one of the big questions in that is like, why did we get, why did we get into this, this field in the first place? You know, like why? Mm -hmm. Why did everyone who's in the helping profession, you know, I mean, I think there, there are some that just legitimately that it's a clean and clear sort of expression of, of them. But I think for a lot of us, it was as a way to almost like a, a, a coping strategy, at mm -hmm. least like for me, a coping strategy that I had to feel valuable was helping people. Yeah. So like I could wounded feel, healer stuff. Yeah. So like the most the most valuable I could imagine being is somebody whose whole entire life is about helping other people in the best possible way that I could personally do that. Yes. So I think it's, you know, and to now to your own can, detriment. Well, it was it it when when we hit a resource like so so say my only resource for feeling valuable is helping other people. Mm -hmm. What happens when I stop helping other people that I'm worthless, exactly. right? Yeah. So it's not that helping people is a bad strategy for feeling valuable. Right. It's that, it's that it can't, it, it has to be very consciously engaged and it has to be balanced with a ton of other ways to feel valuable. 
because right. there's going to be a time where there's a client and you can't help them. Does that mean you're worthless? Right. You know, like it, it, it makes you, un, it, 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 it steals the clarity that you could be bringing to, to this work. Mm -hmm. If, if things have to go a certain way and look a certain way for you to have this, you know, you know, I, I consider value just something you innately are and we use life to different things in life to light it up. But if your strategy is only one thing to light it up and that's what you do for work here, it, it just, it, it mm -hmm. ends up really causing the opposite than right. what it was intended to create. So. Yeah. And the, and the tangles around money that come with that, the mm -hmm. value as a healer and so many healers really struggle with money. Mm -hmm. but, and it's another piece of the value. Like I see this happen in my clients and it certainly it happened to me until it finally shifted when I recognized that because of the culture we've been raised in, if it doesn't make money, it's not valuable. Mm -hmm. And women things, women things shouldn't. Yeah. Shouldn't women things. You should just money. do them. Yeah, you right. should just be making 14 dinners for your family because everybody mm -hmm. wants something different and you mm -hmm. should just be cleaning the house when and not ask not make your kids or your partner help. You should just mm -hmm. you should just. Mm -hmm. And you any can, spiritual so work you like should. you're not a legitimate spiritual coach or teacher if you're if you take money. Like that's right. a very very Huge clear problem. message that is with the opposite. Is, you shouldn't take money, but if you're not making money, you don't have value. Then you're, then you're not a, a very dream. good coach, are you? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's where I took a hit like a couple of years ago when somebody said something. Well, your work just, if it's good, then, you know, it grows. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do any personal work, really. And I was like, well, fuck. I think <laughs> I'm a good at what I do, but I'm not making money and it's not growing. It's a real struggle. And it had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. And that's a patriarchal thing too. If it's good, yeah. you got to make money. And, and we've been in, I think you and I and <clears throat> a few coaches like us have been in a, in an interesting position where we're not going to go to the old hierarchical model of saying, I know you don't know. I'm perfect. Right. You're a pile of shit. <laughs> Be just like me. Right. Like, let me buy, fix you. You have to buy. Let me, let, let me help take money away from you and give you this like magic pill right. that will make you different and you won't have to face any discomfort. Yeah. And you're just going to be better. I'm the only one. Better because you have a giant hole in you. Yeah. And only I can fill it. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we haven't been willing to compromise ourselves. No. And Ugh. market in that way. No. And so I think we've been in a little bit of an interesting spot because I think, like, in five, 10 years from now, that's not going to be an issue for people. But this has really been a transitional period between the old, that old kind of salesy. Um, hierarchical baloney into a new kind of like uh, when I work with people we're standing next to each other if I give right. advice it's really only ever just to try to help them use their engage their mind differently it's not about right. it's not like you need to do what I do and be like me I'm just I it's only just a, I'm standing next to you here's some ideas what's right for you because we're all different people so yeah I think we've been in an interesting space around that and that uh, is and people coming to a healer like that can feel confused mm -hmm. because they're, they're wanting, this isn't mm -hmm. true for everyone, of course, but what happens often is because we're raised from kindergarten to look at the teacher and receive the information and not necessarily think for ourselves about it, then people mm -hmm. will come into therapy. This happened as a therapist, come into and treat it like a medical model. I'm going to go mm -hmm. to the doctor and I'm going to get fixed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to therapy and they're going to fix me. I'm going to go to this coach right. or this healer and they're going to fix me because mm -hmm. I've given them money mm -hmm. that then they're going to give me the thing that, and that's not what it's about at all. My favorite way to talk about that is locus of control. It's like, it, it's when, when you have a really established external locus of control, like you think mm -hmm. that, that things happen outside in 
Mm -hmm. then that makes sense. If you think that like there is a right way to like your body isn't unique to you and your experiences aren't unique to you. There's like an external right right and wrong and you just have to go find it and get it and make yourself right. Yes. Then, then that's the model you, that's the really the only model you can handle. And the more, like a lot of my work is helping people pull that internal. Right. To recognize that it doesn't work like that. Right. Right. And in human design, language that's what's we're in the midst of from 2020 mm-hmm. to 2027 we're in this big okay. transition of working struggling earning our value by what we make outside so we earn our value by making money by helping people by doing something that then has a visible tangible result and that's how we've made our money And then for those of us who've been pulling out of that already, we've been in this struggle point of the world. Like, like you just said, like the world says, this is the only way that has value, but that is completely repugnant to my system. And I won't Mm -hmm. engage in it because we've been a little ahead of the curve. Um, Mm -hmm. So, and you know, just a weird side note on that. Yeah. Actually, like, there's all this talk about like narcissists and empaths and, and mm-hmm. this like horrible, I mean, it's just like they narcissists are just so demonized. And right. I think like the biggest, some of the, a lot of the biggest gifts I've gotten in these areas that we're talking about, yeah. uh, it's because of my relationships with narcissists because they, the, the narcissists I've dealt with, they do have a very clear sense that, you know, I don't live in just the right kind of house. I don't have the right kind of husband. I don't have kids. I, I don't, I don't have like the, the private airplane, so I, I'm not valuable. And so because they, because I could feel that coming from them, I could see the parts of me that agreed with them. That's why being around them was so painful to me. Yeah. And so then I got to really be choiceful and pull that locus of control inside of me and say, "Uh uh-uh, I totally disagree with them. That if that's your marker for value, awesome. Right. But it doesn't Because every single person has a different one. And I just, my, my, my point of that is the state of co- my state of consciousness it's not anything I have or mm-hmm. or any way that I can, my puppet the people around me to look perfect or something right like, right right yeah man <laughs> you have a jam but yeah and that's, that's anyways, so non-sequitur. well no 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 but that's that's good for people to consider um when what and we're being asked to do that like as an entire planet, if you, if we're looking from human design perspective, is it we're moving to that our money and our sense of value comes from how well we take responsibility for ourselves and make sure that we're really nurturing and taking excellent care of ourselves. Cause the more, um, my teacher calls it going from a currency of, uh, struggle or earning to a currency of well being. Yeah. yeah. That the more, which comes into this thing about martyrdom, but the, Mm -hmm. the more well-being you have as we're moving forward in the world, the more money you're going to have, the more recent, we may not even use money 10 years from now, who knows, but whatever Mm -hmm. resources that we need to navigate the world will come to us based equivalent on how well we're taking personal responsibility how well we're taking care of ourselves how well we are moving from external to internal um, locus of control external value to intrinsic sense of value that's Mm -hmm. our work right now is to move Mm -hmm. inside Mm -hmm. and you're right we can't do that if we're engaging super heavily with the martyr archetype Right. I was, um, I was, uh, so this morning I had a, so I had this reading with Virginia Rosenberg, who's an excellent astrologist at Virginia Rosenberg.com. It's a B E R G the Berg part. (laughs) 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 And, um, she was really trying to, she was really dropping a lot of seeds that are just now processing. I'm a little bit of a slow processor anyway. So it sometimes takes me a couple of weeks or more to really get it. Mm-hmm. But it was occurring to me that our healer archetype, even doctors, your, your intent is martyrdom, you know, work yourself mm-hmm. to death. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't take breaks. Don't take vacations, sign up, be the volunteer that takes all the extra shifts until you literally die. 
mm-hmm. and then you're of no use to anyone. And mothers mm-hmm. are parents, mothers, primary caretakers, say it that mm-hmm. way, are put mm-hmm. in that role too, like everybody else first. But mm-hmm. another piece, another angle of this transition is going from that, if we're going to a culture that our resources are going to come from well-being, we can't be mm-hmm. always stepping to the back of the line to let other people go first. And how I've interpreted that is I'm suffering, but I'm suffering less than the woman with two kids in her buggy and a bunch of groceries. And I've only got one thing, but she's frazzled and suffering. And so I let her go first, even though I'm also suffering, but I, I feel like here's how I've done it. Like I'm suffering less. So you Mm -hmm. go first. Mm -hmm. And what clicked in my head this morning, this different level of serving the world, being a space holder or a holder of people rather than a a healer, um, traditional healer definition. Mm -hmm. You're going to come to me and I'm going to give you something. It's going to be an exchange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Is to, is that we don't step to the back of the line because we're suffering less. We are so full and radiant and so attentive and Mm. tending to our well being that the order of things is not something we even think about. If we're at the back Mm -hmm. of the line, we're at the back of the line. It's not a thing. It's just not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. And so your life could look, that's what's so interesting about this work. And I just really hope people get this is like, you might, your life might look exactly the same. Like I, and and me shifting this stuff for myself, everybody, people still say like, you're the most giving person. And it's like, really? You still see me that way? But like, it just like, but it comes from a different kind of consciousness. I'm not doing it automatically. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not like, oh, she's, yeah, she needs this more than me. It's just like, oh, right. I, I, I want to let her go in front. It's not, it's yeah. just, it's, yeah. but it doesn't come from like a, this is the pound of flesh that I owe the universe. <laughs> it's just a, right. oh, I'm a, I'm going to take a step back because this, this, yeah. this lady's struggling and that's where my heart's at right now. Yeah, but it's and not, I'm totally full. They're, right. Right, I'm right. full and yeah. resourced and I'm well mm-hmm. rested mm-hmm. and well tended mm-hmm. and I'm really loving myself. So I don't need it. I don't need Mm -hmm. that. I'm already Mm -hmm. full, already connected to source Mm -hmm. and trust. Like there's such a theme of trust. Mm -hmm. We can't control if we get that virus or not. Now on a human ego level, I'm pretty scared of that Mm because of all my physical stuff. And, and I don't want to, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to get it. (laughs) Mm-hmm. But I want to delay that until they've got excellent treatment plans, you know, <laughs> and on mm-hmm. a, on a different level, it's like, I literally have zero control. I can do what I can do, which is what tend my body, pay it, intuitively eat, get enough sleep, mm-hmm. uh, put my daily practice first before anything else so it's another it's like all these different places in the world that we're being told stop what you're doing and go in Mm -hmm. turn around turn and that and what you just said about having zero control like if you if if listeners want the secret to like really how this all shifts for you it's understanding that like all these things you're trying to do running around and da, 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 like, and, and, and the way that your thoughts are working against you, that is all about trying to get control and you just don't have any, like, right. and, almost, and, and almost none over yourself even really. No, I mean, really. you, you have the, you have the control you have is whether you're going to inquire and go deeper and try to figure out why you're doing the stupid things that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Or, Let's say stupid, but like, <laughs> but like self sabotaging or right. just like bad habits or yeah. weird Run around emotional being a dong. crap. Yeah. Run around being a dig dog. <laughs> that is, it's like we don't even have a ton of control over that. But but we do. What the bit we do have control on is if we're going to go inside of ourselves. We're going to lean into the discomfort. We're going to like map out that internal world and. And try to understand it and try to like, like parent that, yeah. leave that, yes. but it can't, but, but to, but all of the shifting comes from really realizing how little control we have 
and to, and, and, and in that realization, trust and, and gratitude are so important in that process. Huge. Gratitude, huge. And it doesn't mean yeah. that you ignore everything out there. It means that you are, you take personal responsibility. You look mm -hmm. at everything out there and then you choose hopefully using your strategy and authority that mm -hmm. are you choose what you can live with. So mm -hmm. I put a post on Facebook the other day, or I think I got all the social media platforms that at the, there's so much going on with conspirituality and conspiracy and mm -hmm. medical mm -hmm. advice and politics. Oof. And I mean, it's unbearable, Oof. but we yeah. can't turn away from it but we can mm -hmm. look at it, step into that zone of discomfort and then mm -hmm. choose of the available options, which ones can I go to sleep at night and feel like I'm true to myself. I'm in integrity mm -hmm. with my values and my beliefs. So I wear a mask, mm -hmm. even though really nobody here wears masks. Like I'm mm -hmm. often the only person, which my mm -hmm. ego struggled with. Like, I don't want to be the weird kid. And then I was <laughs> like, Oh my gosh, oh, sweet. <laughs> the ship had failed. <laughs> right. So, long right? Ago so uh, there's still so a part really, of me. Yeah. Extra funny. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. There's now. still a part where he's <laughs> like, I just <laughs> want to be normal. And right. It, right. But, but we've all I got that. What, what know, is that? Like right? an 11 year old? We've all oh, got shit. a little bit of like that. Kindergarten. Yeah. Yeah. kindergarten. Oh, okay. Like maybe yeah. five yeah. or six for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Never got past the stage of wanting to be in the, the in group. Yeah. But oh, I care sweet. about other people. <laughs> Yeah, and she just she just didn't have her weirdos with her right off the I bat. I know, it's just the bummer, right? But that's I was all. with a bunch that's of the only problem. Beckys. I grew up with <laughs> like the Becky extreme. <laughs> Sorry if your name is Becky, um, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah. but then I was like, it's not about my ego. It's about no. the mask doesn't protect me. It protects you, mm -hmm. and people really are struggling with that. And mm -hmm. it's like, I don't want to go in a store if there's even a half of a percent chance that I mm -hmm. have it and I can spread mm -hmm. it to you. That's mm -hmm. the only way I can live with myself and go to sleep at night. Uh, I don't love wearing a mask. I, I right. forget sometimes I have to go back and get it. The same thing happened when seatbelts. I remember mm -hmm. a, a firefighter almost going bodies with someone on a scene, an accident scene who made some crack about seatbelts and we were mm. scraping people up off the parking, mm. you know, off mm -hmm. the, the road highway because they weren't wearing a seatbelt. So mm -hmm. as an EMT and as a firefighter and in emergency medicine, we we're like, oh yeah, the, wear the seatbelt because, you know, and this firefighter was just lost. It was a bad day. Lost mm -hmm. it and started screaming and yelling about, you know, we've got blood on our hands, literally. Mm -hmm. And because this person didn't wear a seatbelt. So fuck you, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the whole, like, it's, this is such an interesting time because like I felt this huge. So as soon as the mask thing became a political issue. Right. It's like there stamp a D such... on your face. You wearing a mask, you must be a democratic liberal. Right. You're you're scared, <laughs> you're whatever. You're and, weenie. And, and they can't force me. And it's like and, and so like at first I was very like I felt just so much anger. Mm -hmm. And I just want to normalize anger, everybody. Like if yes. you feel anger, even that rage. anger anger rage it's not the same anger is not the same thing as violently hurting people or yourself right. it is not the same thing there's the there's the physical energy inside of your body that is anger and rage and it is there for a reason and it's trying to do something for you right so so i felt all this anger and rage and what i realized is like it's just like this has been such an incredibly beautiful time in a way this last like four years because this is just the reality. Like this is how people really feel and think. And we, and, right. and like to understand and accept that. And, and instead of then making it about me and like, well now, you know, like wanting to internally have a fight with them, like right. that is, I don't, I don't know. Like, does anyone consciously really think that fighting with somebody over an issue like this is going to get anybody anywhere? It never Does anybody works. really think that because you're so wrong and every amount of energy you're putting into fighting 
this violently like I'm right, you're wrong. Oh my gosh, you guys just have some common sense. Like all the <laughs> bullshit out there of like this, like, why is everybody like this? Half of the country have fucking morons. Like, right. seriously, <laughs> go ahead. If you want to just waste all of your time and energy, keep going at it. Right. But like, it's different. That's different from being angry. So what I did, what yeah. I, what my process was, I was really angry. And I'm like, why are they so selfish? Blah, blah, blah. And then I just took a second to like, to remember my resistance, my anger towards them means nothing. It, it's, it, it's not going to help. So, so if I look at what's going on for them, okay, so they are, they are fighting for their freedom right now. That's what right. they're leveraging is their freedom. Which we would fight so, equally hard for in an opposite direction. Mm-hmm. You know, right. like, that's why right. arguing with people doesn't work. You couldn't argue right. me out of wearing a mask. I can't right. argue you into wearing a mask. Right. So, so what's possible in a state of acceptance is going like, okay, these people are just fighting for their freedom. So how do I help? So how do we reframe this conversation into like, you have the freedom to contribute to other people's safety. Like how do we, there's just a way that we can That's just rework this whole way conversation. To say that. That's a great like, way to say that. Like you're exercising your freedom to right. protect other people just right. in case you just might have, have the virus. Whole campaign. Exactly. And so it's like, if we can't, if we're, if we're so locked, we get where this is just where our, we are as a human race right yeah, now. Yeah, it's just human we nature. We just are so locked in resistance. Yes. And, it, and really not external violence to a degree, but really the bigger problem is this, these internalized violent states that we have. So, so somebody on the right has like this view of me that I'm just like a, 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 a liberal socialist. Um, I don't know what I, what they think I want to do. Like I want to make yeah. everybody gay or something. <laughs> Which would actually pretty, be pretty great. Right. But not that there's anything Non sequitur again. Yeah. That's the whole thing. The world would be better if everybody was just some shade of black or brown and we were all gay. That'd be great. But okay, the shit they're right. And I want to take away your guns. Dang it. Right. They were right. I'm just kidding. Um, but like, so they, and then the, on the other side, there's just this entrenched position. And then we have these wars inside of ourselves. We have these it wars. It starts inside. And, yeah. and to kind of take it, it starts back to this inside. martyr, right. To take it back to this martyr conversation we're having, it is an institutionalized position of resistance against other people's pain and suffering. And that's the problem. Especially in America. Right. And and maybe Australia, I don't know, I can't speak to that really, but the countries that are like really hardcore stress independence, mm-hmm. me against the world, I'm mm-hmm. going to get, it's, it goes back to that hierarchy. I got to do whatever it takes to climb to the top and be in the in-group mm-hmm. and be, whatever that is defined to be. And mm-hmm. I, but I, le- I just want to point out that your anger let you know. Yeah that your anger, anger said, Hey, there needs yeah. to be an evaluation here. Something's yeah. You, happening. you created a they inside yeah. of your system and now you're at war with yourself right. in their minds. And it's so, right. and I, I am not going to, I'm, ch- I've chosen that, that I will change with love. I will change with what I'm for. I will change with this, that, that type of consciousness because I, because it's just, obvious that that hateful violent stuff only perpetuates itself it doesn't work so it's like it's not like any kind of special enlightenment thing it's just like that's just dumb but you're not excluding it that's what i really want people to hear love includes it all yeah love like we're talking about which is that Mm -hmm. uh, avlakitisvara the bodhisattva vow uh, not mm-hmm. not stepping to the back of the line because you're right. suffering less right. and someone's suffering more, but because you love even the fight, you love the human part of yeah. us that fights. We have pushing. to love, yeah. The so what, we have to love yeah, the suffering. Yeah. So yeah. what you're saying is, it's not because it's different. Like I think people sometimes, it hurts to be in conflict. It hurts a lot. Right. And for a lot of people, they're seeing friends, family, employers, all of a sudden shift off in another Mm -hmm. direction that's extremely Mm -hmm. painful to Mm -hmm. watch. Like there's Mm -hmm. divisions here and divisions there. And there's people that you never thought 
we're queuing on whatever tom hanks and uh-huh. wayfair all that stuff it's like this sudden explosion and you're like totally. what the hell is happening and they're like you have common sense wake Where's up your common- wake, wake up, up. I if i wasn't I ready it. to wake up before but then i heard and now i'm awake and, yeah. and there's this like this smarminess like pat on the head like someday you'll wake up too and you exactly. know whatever it's not I know, that. but we have to look at ourselves and see how we do the exact same thing though you know exactly. that's like what it's i see exact same thing. i just like, like I no like you I'm wake up no you some fucking kind wake of stroke. up stroke yeah <laughs> right. and then i'm like oh god it's yeah. such a it's and just a weird thing i know the control. truth i yeah. have the truth that is yeah. insane yeah. Because I say I have the truth and you say, you have, so yeah, it's just like this spin, spin, spin. Yep. The way yep. out of the spin, itself. yes, but the way out of the spin is not the love and light. I'm not the I'm way we so, think about it. Right. Yep. That's what I really want to get to is, is it's yeah. not that it's not right. the, because that comes as a reaction to pain. Yeah. We step back and we go, I'm going to step out of this and just hang out in my, what I think is my heart space and love yeah. all you maniacs while thinking I'm right. And right. that home day, someday you'll, if I love you enough, you'll catch up to me. That is right. a response to, that's a response by people who haven't dealt with their shadow. Who right. Can't stand because... the burn of confusion, the searing of shame the mm-hmm. heat of anger the sadness of disappointment and what the hell and i didn't know everybody was black was hurting so badly and now i don't know what to do with all this so i'm mm-hmm. just going to step back from it mm-hmm. that's not what you're talking about right yeah yeah we have to redefine cuz love love the when we talk about loving people the connotations that has is like babying pandering martyring yourself to them yeah and that's not love that is no. that is dysfunctional caretaking coddling and we and we do it with ourselves too and it and re, what real love looks like is is loving yourself loving others and knowing that you're the you're the project manager of getting your needs met Yes. And nobody, and, and, you can't, and it's, it's, it's really immature to expect other people to, to meet our needs, you know? So, so that's really, that's really a lot of it. As so well. I love, love what means you just going said. Inside. Yeah. yeah. I love what you just said with the word immature, because mm-hmm. in my reading, Virginia used this word, this different maturity as a, this different la- layer, I hate to say mm-hmm. level because that implies hierarchy, but this different aspect let's put it that way Mm -hmm. a more mature love a more mature healer right because when you think about it it's like like uh, the way that a a mother or or father or or caretaker loves a baby Mm -hmm. that's one kind of love and then there's all the other phases of love as a parent you know but like but all we're stuck on is right now is this consciousness of baby love Baby Baby love, yeah, and and then tribal love. In Mm -hmm. human design, we're moving from tribal to individual. Not not that we won't be tribal, but we won't be tribal in the same way of demanding compliance and conformity. And I think when we're stuck in parental love, we we demand compliance and conformity because we're protecting Mm -hmm. the family. If you Mm -hmm. cry and the enemy is outside, we're all dead. So you don't mm. cry ever, mm. Mm. you know, mm. and, and it's coming from a place of love. I am in charge of the family. I'm going to protect the family and whoever's deviating in a way that I think is dangerous. I'm going to smash it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the other right. kind of love is cry. If you want, <laughs> we'll take care of ourselves. We'll come at each other with, you've got this, I've got that. Let's, exchange or or whatever and i'm going to love myself and Mm -hmm. not look to you to make sure that i'm fed which is what's breaking down in our government i'm not gonna not that we shouldn't feed people Mm -hmm. but there's a responsibility piece there's a feeding people because it's appropriate and a spillover and there's a feeding people to control people is this making Mm -hmm. sense Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like to me that extra love the different layer of love is what i've always thought of as god which is and or nature which is impersonal love 
Mm-hmm. It is love in the extreme of free will. Well, and, uh, and maybe another way of talking about this is like, that I'm just so grateful for this concept in the anti-racist conversations about like decentralizing yourself, you know, mm, so to like a degree, yeah. the martyr, the sort of martyr love is really about, it's a, it's a un, it's a non-consensual contract that you have with another person. They have not agreed to this contract. So say it's between like a parent and a child. It's like, I'm going to sacrifice my, my happiness, my vitality for you. But then when you're an adult, you will, you will give me all of that back. Or I, I yeah. want your loyalty in this way. Or like yeah. between a, co- a, a doctor a commodity. and patient. Or a, Commodified a, a, love. Right. So it's, so it's really shifting that way of, of interacting to coming up and out and going like, again, the reason for my, the name of my podcast, Agnostic Medium is I don't know what's right for anybody. I don't know right. what's going on. We don't, our brains, the, to project our brains, our puny little brains with all its filters and dysfunctions and <laughs> somehow think we can get right or wrong for anybody else or, yeah. or, or the meaning of this vast and complicated universe. Like it's just right. beyond arrogant. So it like what's, arrogant. what, what does love look when we step outside of that and say, you know, I thought that this was such a horrible thing that happened to this person that they, they got like cheated on and left by their, by their partner in this horrible way. And then you give it like a couple months and you're like, oh my gosh, that was an awesome thing to have happened to them. Yeah. You know, there or you see somebody so much good from it. going down and down into a depression and like you want to lift them up out of that so badly and you and you feel like a failure because you couldn't do it, but then eventually they get on this like awesome medication that just like just does amazing things for their brain chemistry, and like right. that's exactly what they needed. So it's like we just have to shift out of this like individual mind space. I mean, it's important for your own personal life, your own personal growth, but really when we t- when we bring it uh, external, like we, you don't know what's right for anybody. We don't know. We have to learn to love suffering. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But I not, but not that. use it as a way to check out. So that's the trick. Is that's like the love, trick. Love people's suffering, yeah. but we still like. So the way a way to talk about this in relation to say be you know, I guess where it comes up so much right now, um, is in say the being anti-racist conversation. So it, I have to accept that this is this is the reality, but part of accepting that reality is accepting my part in it. There is institutionalized racism Absolutely. and privilege and I benefit from that. So it's like, so that's just, that's part of the reality that it, it's important for me to accept and then look at like, what is one person's role in changing that? Yeah. What, not, I, what do I not, I have to carry it for everybody and I'm right. Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the hill. <laughs> the like, yeah. Exactly. Like, Oh, I'll just cut, I'll just give you my liver. How's that? <laughs> right. And now I have to give all my services away for free and I can't charge money anymore. And I, you know, it's just, so it's standing in the soup of all this, right? There's, we've right. talked about a lot of stuff and you can look at it and argue about it and defend it. And you could go so many different directions and it's owning and recognizing that there are so many different directions. Mm-hmm. And it's not that you step out of life, you step further into it because mm-hmm. at the bottom of all of that is a willingness to feel pain and discomfort Mm -hmm. not that you're going to feel pain and then you're going to manifest bad things because that's garbage Mm -hmm. but it's being willing to feel the pain of recognizing oh my god i never realized that i can go into a store and not be followed and that's what is meant by white supremacy and racism Mm -hmm. that no of course Mm -hmm. i wouldn't on purpose say something terrible to a black person i would never do that on purpose and people get really hung up on that because nobody you know nobody wants to feel like a shithead but we act in ways that are shitheaded because Mm -hmm. that's what we've been taught and raised in and we're Mm -hmm. and to take a step back from that and listen Mm -hmm. means that we're going to hurt 
-hmm. and we're still thinking that hurting is separate from loving and it's not. And here, and here's the problem with a lot of these conversations is like, we are way too binary. Like yes. we all yeah. have this little kid voice in our head. That's like, if you're racist, you're evil. Right. And then there's it can only part be of us this. that's like, you could only, and there's the other part of us like, I know that I'm good. I try really hard. I've worked so I hard in my people. life and I, I know I'm good and I love people. So I can't be, I can't be evil. Right. Right. But that's, I mean, so, so to take that and blow it up to what we're talking about, like, we're always on a journey. You're never going to be perfect. You're never going to be the perfect anti-racist. You're never going to be a perfect, like levitating human that doesn't have any feelings. <laughs> right. Like, I just right. love everybody all the time. Right. I know. Always in bliss. I, I live on air. And yeah. I am special. And yeah. I'm an Eritarian. I'm an Eritarian. A Breatharian. <laughs> yeah, I'm an Eritarian. I knew some people like that that ended up we in don't... the hospital. It's still oh, a sorry. thing out there. Oh Breatharianism was big in the 80s. Oh, my God. Don't do it. Please we don't stop eating. We can't have that. <laughs> we can't be that. So it's like, can, no. you just, can we love ourselves? I mean, if, we can, if you can love yourself, even though you're racist and privileged, like, then we can have these conversations and, and right. say like, okay, how can you I can contribute handle to change without of the, without like being shame motivated? Cause that, right. that only works when you're still feeling ashamed. So like right now there's right. like a massive drop off of people engaging in, in shame. change right now because they it's don't like feel shame, shame anymore. So they felt a ton of shame when George Floyd died, but yeah. now they don't have as much shame. They've kind of like it wore off a little bit. So then yeah. they're not motivated anymore. It's like, it right. can't be about that. It's got to be about what you're for and what you love and what you want to work towards. And planning that so that it doesn't yeah. drop off the radar, mm -hmm. you know? So these things mm -hmm. don't keep happening again and again, and we all go into the shit. And then mm -hmm. we, like you said, it fades. You can't stay in shame forever. It, it fades. It, all emotions fade. And then mm -hmm. we forget about it. So like right. one tiny thing is I signed up for an email that's anti-racism daily because I know mm -hmm. I'll forget because it, I, I don't live it because I'm white. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. know I have to plan for continued study and continued mm -hmm. inquiry. And I can't do all the things at all the time, but every day I can spend time reading that email and yeah. doing the practice or call, you know, whatever. There's little things that accumulate to growing awareness. Um, mm -hmm. So I think part of that, that shifting, it, uh, well, the two things, the non-binary or shifting away from binary thought, mm -hmm. he, he even is ref reflected in the tussle about gender identity. Like mm -hmm. every single aspect of things we struggle with as humans is somewhere right now mm -hmm. being exposed all the things. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's knowing if you're responsible and I think mature love takes the time to contemplate where from what space on the continuum of total individual basic human brain to total oneness source perspective life after life kind of oneness that we can speak from and mm -hmm. where am i speaking from and is this the right time you don't tell someone who's bleeding we're all one and if you die that's okay you'll just have mm -hmm. another life and so i'll just stand here and, and watch you bleed because i don't want to get blood on my hands no you fucking get on the ground and you slap something on the bleeding you stop mm -hmm. the bleeding and then later you may you talk about hey dummy don't drive drunk mm -hmm. because then you run into trees and you bleed all over the place and people have to fix you so mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of good intentioned. We needed a Trump. No, we did not. That's a natural consequence of our shitheaded behavior. It mm -hmm. happened and we can take some good from it. So. That's the way I like to think about it. Like, it's not like, Oh, that accident happened because For a I, because God is sitting up there and I was like, you know what? She's I'm pretty arrogant. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to smack her with a car accident. Like that's just, that's really screwy thinking so i like to think yeah. about it like look at how amazing we are that we can take even this and turn it into something beautiful like almost yes. the degree we which something is crappy yeah. is the degree which we can transcend and like love and go beyond like it is it's fuel 
it's, it's fuel, fuel. it's yeah. fodder, it's kindling, it's all of that in one to help you decide, like decide what is the next step you're going to take, but you're right. You can't do it without feeling it and being embodied and, and knowing and, where you're at and leaning into the, the discomfort. Day. And yeah. that's how we transform. Some, d- some days yeah. we're looking at it from a, I don't want that fucking virus, get a mask on your face, chump. Mm-hmm. And other yeah. days we're like, I love all you. I need to wear a mask so that I can sleep at night and feel mm-hmm. in integrity with myself. And mm-hmm. plus we're all going to die. We're going to go and who the hell knows what happens after that. We have a lot mm-hmm. of theories, but like you said, we mm-hmm. don't know. Who knows? We don't know shit nope. about shit, but we yeah. do the best we can by looking Mm -hmm. at what's available and then at the end of the day what can you live with and Mm -hmm. are you seeking comfort over growth Mm -hmm. some days we seek comfort over growth some days Mm -hmm. i emotionally eat some days Mm -hmm. i don't eat and feel the the discomfort that's hidden underneath overeating it's Mm -hmm. it's that not stepping away from the binary and loving it all the bloody mess and the glorious Mm -hmm. angel wings Mm-hmm. loving all of it mm-hmm. even shame exactly. mm-hmm. and being present maybe presence is mm-hmm. another word to toss in the mix like being present mm-hmm. with what's happening that doesn't mean you allow right. people to step on you and if you need to unfriend right. people who are super toxic and going down conspiracy road and you don't mm-hmm. I mean it's choices right mm-hmm. yeah i just i don't it, it's like like part of that is like the you know not being in resistance is Mm -hmm. i not i don't have to hold any of that in my consciousness so yeah i unfollow people that are that i think are spreading reality unhealthy things i just unfollow them and like and i i send them love and i unfollow it and i and a lot of times like i'll watch this is maybe pretty advanced stuff i admit but i'll i'll watch some of the the conspiracy theory stuff that they post just so i can try to understand how their brain is working and I'll only let myself do that as long as I really stay in my body and I look at what feelings come up as it happens. And I'm not, I don't get back in that entrenched, like, how can they believe this <laughs> bullshit? Wow. Well, I'm going to spit right. on them. If I Knock it off. I'm going to pull Wake my mask up. out and spit on them without the mask on. Like, <laughs> if, as long as I'm not going there, I'll let myself <laughs> watch, watch it right. just like to understand and like and and take that acceptance even deeper but like but on the general you know the point of the acceptance is i i don't that feels so from my perspective that feels like a drag thinking like all all the scientists in this country are part of an agenda and there's a deep state like that stuff is just like really stressful and violent and i so i don't want to hold in my consciousness to be looking at it and i don't want to hold it in my consciousness to be fighting it you know not fighting reality is huge yeah Mm -hmm. not fighting Mm -hmm. the reality of what people say right their experience that's that is valid right and that goes back to like if we can if what so what can happen if you stop being in resistance is you can look at things from like a deeper perspective so so when i think about something like this the the only real problem is i believe that other people have to think like me and value what i value and that's just not reality so well, is, is the, the problem that people are different or is the problem that I have the belief that people should be just like me? Like, I think that's really more the problem. That, well, and underneath yeah. that is if you're different, we're going to die. Right. As a, tr- right. as a tribal perspective, which we're shifting out of in theory, I don't know if that's true, but it feels kind of true. Mm-hmm. If you're different than me, the whole tribe's yeah, going to go down. So oh. you have, so there's like, that's why I think where the ferocity or ferocity comes from. Mm-hmm. So there's this ferocious demand that everybody mm-hmm. get on board the ship, what, mm-hmm. but everybody's got their own ship. Right. But the driving fear is uh, if you don't get on this ship, we're all going to die. Mm-hmm. I right. have yep. to make you. I That's have absolutely to force you. the narrative now I'm seeing on both sides is like on both if, sides. If if if, tr- if the liberals get a hold of this country, you're dead. Right. You're dead. And and on the other side, it's like if there's four more years of Trump, we're all dead. We're all dead. The whole planet is dead. everything Everybody, always everyone, comes back to being dead. Somehow it's going to explode the universe. <laughs> The whole and universe is dead. The universe will be dead, right? right. So that is. So you motherfuckers need so, to knock it off. 
Right. So, but if you, if you take a step back from the whole thing and you look at it, what is happening is when someone is engaged in the fear center of their brain, they cannot think like, co co like cognitive processing is severely Offline. compromised. It's gone. So that's where like I see people and they're, t they're touting things that are just completely, they, it's not tethered to reality, but they're like, wake up, idiots. <laughs> Why can't you think logically? And it's like, right. oh, and, oh, baby doll. Right, this right. Is and they look at us in that way and then we look at them that way and it's like right. we're all staring in a mirror. Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. so but that's but it's but it's so scary important to look and see like who you know when i take a step back it's like none of the stuff that we're a uh, very little of the stuff that we're really back and forth about matters so much but like who's who who's invested in us staying fighting with each other you know well, that's, that's the question like who, that, what's that, the engine what's the industry the, the where's the money <laughs> well yeah, I mean, it's, but why, why do we, why are we fighting over Im immigration? Why is that an issue? Why are food stamps an issue? Why are right. like these kind of smaller things really like who's invested in us really hating each other and then look at how they do it and then ask these bigger questions like. And then like, take uh, personal uh, responsibility. Right. For what you're doing on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. one piece of this, so I want to leave people with what this means going from a healer to a holder you're mm -hmm. holding this pot of soup rather than fighting over the carrots are too close to the potatoes mm -hmm. or the the beans are idiots and the you know we have to keep it vegan <laughs> tomatoes are <laughs> Well, the you tomatoes. Do. Might have yeah, I do. Here's a, you, you, you've got some, uh, what is it, cabrito or whatever. Um, some goat, some goat leg. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, un, and hold the whole thing and be able to slide back and forth up and down the continuum. I'm going to look at the mm -hmm. carrots today. How does that affect the soup? I'm going to be a mm -hmm. tomato today. How does that affect the soup? Yep. Uh, and, and then choosing out of your own personal responsibility to take care of yourself so fully mm -hmm. and nourish and resource yourself so completely that mm -hmm. things start to shift all around you and life starts to even in the midst of the messiness get easier then this is what mm -hmm. i always tell people you're you could be wrong and if you take the time to self-reflect on a daily basis you will be guided to you'll find yourself in motion going to march in the street or looking for or, or simply reading an anti-racism racism email every day or mm -hmm. you, you know or um giving money calling your representatives it just looks yeah. totally different but you're right spending time understanding flow. your neighbor who's got a giant trump sign in the yard and you're just baffled mm -hmm. by it you'll know mm -hmm. where to go and what to do if you'll stay in your body, which is ancient knowledge and current human design stuff, if you'll stay in your body, you mm -hmm. will know what is appropriate in the moment. And there mm -hmm. doesn't, there's never fight energy in authentic intuition. Mm -hmm. It doesn't push. There's no compulsion. Mm -hmm. It's easy and simple and soft and quiet. Mm -hmm. It might mm -hmm. not mean, like you said, you're out, your outer life really hasn't changed that much. Mine hasn't either, mm -hmm. but I'm different. But internally, I feel like everything's a choice. There's no yeah. automatic, there's no, no automatic giving. There's no automatic, no. there's not the same automatic martyrdom. It's like no. I, every, every action I take, it's because that's what I want and I'm choosing and yeah. I take you're responsibility the for that. Yeah. And taking yeah. the time to feel into that and to make space for it. Right. So at the end of the day, it's really looking at like, are we going to keep coming to our lives and our, our world from this place of little teeny tiny me brain uh -huh. or, and, and with all our filters and dysfunctions and issues we're working out, or are we going to hold all of that with love and come from it with that? Like you said, there's something about space. And if, if anybody yeah. listening hasn't, hasn't, doesn't have a relationship with that start find a way there's a million ways to do it but there's something about bringing in that holding space and something 
about bringing your awareness to something without trying to manipulate it, without trying to contort it, just being with it and letting something unfold there. Like, so, so when you and I talk about healing, that's really what we're talking about. It's just Space. bringing awareness, yeah. bringing spaciousness to something. And in that, it changes on its own. On its own. It's effortless. That doesn't right. mean not painful. There's no the right. struggle gets taken out. The pain right. is that difference between clean pain and dirty pain. Right. Between a knife Oops, slicing good. through a, like yeah. a Gordian knot versus the... Uh, sticky resistance kind right Um, it's very clean and it's very fast but the Mm -hmm. thing is it's not sexy right you can't sell it in a seven easy steps right hey (laughs) come feel like shit with me (laughs) right so our work is harder to market right people are but people are always i mean that that is like it it is i think evolutionary biological it is built into us to avoid discomfort we absolutely want. it has to and yeah, so we, what yeah. what we what we need to reteach we what we need to learn is that that actually the fastest way out of pain is to turn go towards it, it and go into it yeah because That's when we're aboard it it's like we're dragging a corpse around with us all the time of this pain right. because we just don't we're so afraid of feeling it we think the point the way to get rid of it is to look external and do 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 Right. And resist and fight and all these things. We're just doing right. all that to try to not feel this pain and this fear we have. Right. But the, but the trick is exactly like you're saying, just turn towards it, go into it, open to it. And then that does something. The and that with can't it happen without space. You, you got to turn off the computer. You got to turn off the TV. You got to stop. I got to get my head out of the bowl of popcorn to make space, oh. to make quiet space. And... Mm-hmm for healers who are experiencing the sudden falling away of everything and this confusion about what do I do now? Mm -hmm. What you do now is asked to be changed, Mm -hmm. to be awakened. You give yourself, you don't make choices right now. If I have people Mm -hmm. struggling with, well, what do I do now? Nothing. Nothing. That is the answer. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Do Mm -hmm. what you have to do to keep a roof over your head and food in your belly and take care of your family as best you can. There's nothing else that needs to happen right now. The whole world is being asked, pushed, almost forced Mm -hmm. into aloneness and Mm -hmm. having to turn inward in order to survive in the new way. Mm -hmm. There's a gap and we're in it. Yeah. And we're so entrained that but it's like that, that gap is wrong. determined value and yeah, we're not producing. We're therefore not we're productive and we're not, and uh, we're not even going in the direction of whatever. And it's like, we're not creating like we, trigonometry <laughs> trigonometry while we're stuck in the house with the, cats. Oh, like, we're I not doing my anything. I haven't written my book. Yeah. yeah I read a book. So, You're fucking useless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know my cats don't think so though no my cats so take that. well my life my hasn't changed right. <laughs> right at all <laughs> except that you know going to the grocery store i don't go as often but mm-hmm. so we can just build in we can build in a new framework in our minds for right. for in between spaces you know which is yes. the really uh, if we're the honest, limited space most of our life right. is lived in in a sort of not sure in between process of right. becoming. So what right. if we just make that a lot of the point? What if we make right. 90% of the point just becoming Yeah, and being in, in the, I don't know. And right. I don't know. Fully. I don't know. Beginner brain ancient, yeah. right? This is like yeah. basic Buddhism. Taoism. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And we're just acting like we just yeah. figured it out. Well, we did because <laughs> we're super smart. And like that. We we're putting oh gosh, our own. I just figured out Buddhism. Right. Uh, like, oh, myself. sit down and <laughs> chop wood, carry water. Let's let's yeah. make that our uh, uh you know our uh, tagline. I got a new tagline. <laughs> chop wood, carry that. water. I'm the smartest motherfucker <laughs> on earth. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's three thousand years old. Oh well. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> but we left ourselves breadcrumbs, right? Right. We let we all throughout human history we've left ourselves text. Mm-hmm. And, and teach notes from teachers we misinterpret mm-hmm. the shit out of them but at mm-hmm. the heart of all of them is hey remember you're an mm-hmm. idiot right and your mind is 
Brains only are full good crap. for mm-hmm. having fun mm-hmm. playing. This what I what I find so validating and freeing about human design is your mind is a crazy place. It's mm-hmm. a carnival of madness. It's not and even personal. That's okay. Really? Yeah. yeah, it's what it does. It gathers data and plays with it and puts things together and smashes them apart and comes mm-hmm. up with extreme and bizarro theories all the time. Don't take action from that. Place. Just don't. Don't make default decisions and don't make that your it. identity. Right. Yeah, That's it's not it's who like, you are. I I think about it like like I think I read this in this book called Power Versus Force a long time ago, which not necessarily promoting the book, but this one thing that the author said was really interesting that your eyes your eyes see things. You have a receptor for for sight for light in your eyes and you see things, but you don't think you're what you see. And we have your yeah. ears hear sounds, but you don't think the sounds are who you are. Your brain is just only the same thing. It just, it's just like a, a thing that captures and, and processes and poops out thoughts. <laughs> but that is not who you are. I had this vision of the little squeezy bunny thing that shits out a chocolate jelly bean. <laughs> Exactly. That you can get. That's your Easter. thoughts. Squish. Like little tiny hard poops. <laughs> little chocolate That's jelly that. beans that and are then, completely irrelevant. <laughs> totally. And you have to be the thing at the center of that that's like, yes to that, no to that. Oh, that's hilarious. Where did that come from? You know? Right. Like, look at the pet. Be, be, the, be the center that these things float by, you know? Like, that's the yeah. point of so much of this is like, don't just really question everything you think which is i think why forest rake showed up like or the push to get it out public and people all of a sudden being like hey the trees are kind of chatty uh Mm -hmm. that's weird no they're like no here we are we're showing you how to do it get rooted Mm -hmm. reach for the sky it's so simple let the stuff happen around you and perceive and receive it all don't Mm -hmm. fight it is Mm -hmm. it doesn't work that's the insanity, right. right? We keep thinking right. if we fight it long enough, we'll win. But it doesn't work. And Press our world is not working that way no. anymore. Nope. We're in transition. Nope. Working but we have to love, but we have to love the anymore. pain of the human race right now and, the, yeah. and like love it and, and be and our it. force. And love it and, and hate, hate it. it and be angry. <laughs> but, that, but we have the opportunity to love that, that, that we have a chance now to make a different world and we each get to decide like how we want to contribute to that and and I would I would challenge everyone to look at how they can change it with with something powerful like like love and what they're for and trying to make a difference through that rather than um thinking that sitting on Facebook ranting or 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 you know, in private, like hating giant, giant groups of society. Like if you think and that's going to help anything, it's just not. Struggling over yeah. s- who's going to knock the statue down, all that kind right. of stuff. So anything yep. external really is what's fallen away. And I think mm-hmm. it all, always circles back to mm. moving from us acting upon the outside and the outside acting upon us, whether as we're in a role as a healer or a coach or therapist or whatever it is you do in the mm-hmm. world. Um, to I'm going to stand central, decentralize mm-hmm. myself. I'm going to be uh, sovereign and standing next to you. Not mm-hmm. and and I'm taking care of myself so that I can radiate the greatest level of peace and love that makes mm-hmm. space for chaos and rage and love and joy and all the beautiful and messy things. So go ahead, and I oh. want to give people one technique. Did you? Did you have something? I thought I heard you inhale. Mm-mm. Oh, you're just. No, I just breathe. I just breathe weird. <laughs> you're just. Don't worry about me. Oh. <laughs> like, are you just staying alive for the moment? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Just breathing. Nice. Good work. Gold star. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. Talking about self care. I'm breathing. Right. Doing a really good Gold job star of it. for inhalation and <laughs> exhalation <you>. mastery. <laughs> do, do, do. Um. <laughs> So concrete tip, two concrete tips, and you can offer what you have. My go-to is always daily practice, daily practice, daily Uh, practice. Why are you like this? (laughs) I know. So so I have, I'm a one trick pony. (laughs) Daily practice. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Everybody's least favorite thing. The thing that is the least sexy, the most boring 
yeah. and the most profound if you and the shot. only thing that works the only thing that works five to 15 minutes a day in silence throw your phone on the other side of the room so you're not tempted to check it and notice mm -hmm. how much you want to check it and mm -hmm. just be with yourself you're not doing anything but listening and then i really love tosha silver's work her change me prayers it's in the bible too you don't ask for the world to change you don't ask for people to change you ask to be changed so that mm -hmm. you know what's best in any given moment for your life path service is important to to us and and most people who listen to this podcast are in some kind of service but service isn't what we have known and we don't know where we're going we're becoming it we're living it we're in it right now so just I think I've been spending more time with change me into someone who can be patient. Change mm. me into someone who's absolutely committed to taking mm. extreme self-care so that I'm in service to others through being in service to myself, my mm. connection to God first and foremost, mm -hmm. um, praying for the courage to stay present, the courage to face our shame, mm the strength to go into the insanity and let it move through us it takes strength and courage to do that because mm -hmm. like you said earlier it's anti-human survival to go toward pain mm -hmm. and let it move through mm -hmm. so change me prayers and silent meditation that's what i got mm -hmm. what do you got yeah well i would just add to the silent meditation piece i think what i the, the main resistance that I think people have to that is thinking that the point of it is not thinking. But yes, what I would, thank you for what I would that. Cha challenge people with this is like, this is what I, what I, what we're talking about as far as like that thing, that's not your thoughts. Like it, this, meditation is just about having a relationship with that thing. That's not your thoughts. That doesn't mean you don't think it just means there's somebody observing the thoughts and not hanging yeah. on to them and not making the no resistance. Use. So you wake up if you're in a meditation and you and you kind of like come back into awareness and you're like, oh my gosh, I was down, down on that tangent. That's perfect. You just did the whole point. Yeah. Just to wake up. So yeah. so it's just to see what you're of, doing, to know what you're doing. Yep. Just see what's there. You may you may have spaces in your thoughts or you may not, but it's the point is is to to sh to shift who, who who almost it's a it's a it's a practice of shifting your identity from thoughts to like to, to, to something bigger that you really are. Yeah. So that, the, and, and that's ending really what duality mm, and ending binary. Right. Right. It's so my suggestion is continue on your journey to pull that locus of control inside of yourself and stop looking for right or wrong for the most part as an external like don't murder people just because you feel like it obviously this and don't like, listen to people who say a, they have the truth i right. know that we don't yeah. know shit about like, we don't know jack or shit and that's again an evolutionary desire we want it alpha we want somebody to just tell right. us what to do we don't want to go through the labor of doing all this but it's like right. the reframing like that this is actually the point so so learn how to learn how to see what's right for you and then when and when we can shift that to an internal thing we're not so concerned with what, with what other people are doing and we're not you, so concerned yeah. with resistance to other people because we're there isn't a, there isn't like like for me it's right to wear a mask for somebody else that infringes on their freedom it's they just can. really yeah. it, it's really like uh, there's there's more to be done with that but but at the end of the day like it, it's 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 not right for for me necessarily to um to spend my whole life on the front lines like in living in a tree right for somebody else that is right for them right like so if it's you, just, yeah it's, yeah if you don't know what's right you can do a change me prayer around that change me into yeah. someone who always knows what's right for me in every given for, moment but just for our own self yeah 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 right for me yeah yeah right not not change my stupid neighbor into someone who right. <laughs> votes the way i want them to vote right because it's yeah. going to happen whatever happens happens we do our part we can only do right. what we can do yep and you'll Focusing know what on, to do when you make space yeah focus that focus on taking that personal responsibility what do what why why am i in resistance to this other person what do i think that means about me and then and then continue to bring that back in yeah. always taking everything that everything you're 
resistance is just an indicator that there's set, that there's work for you to do around that resistance. So you just keep going yeah. into it, and that doesn't mean passivity. It doesn't no. mean it's like I just am sending. It doesn't mean it's cotton candy. Oh, you're being it's too a, negative. Yeah. <laughs> you're being so negative. I'm like, well, you're being yeah. negative about me being negative. So now who's a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you telling everybody the conversation we had yesterday? <laughs> That's private. Right. Right. I just had it with you being negative about my negativity. <laughs> I love it. This is the best. Oh my God. Okay. I'm going to draw us too close because I know that we can talk for a hundred million years and never run yeah. out of stuff to talk about. So, yeah. uh, so we've wandered all around and we just always end with, think less feel more yep <laughs> that's it that's if it. you want to find heather you can find her at heatherwestmoreland.com or on facebook medium heather westmoreland yep 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 pretty simple thank you for listening i know this was a long one i appreciate you if you uh, appreciate you hanging out also do whatever the fuck you want so talk to you later